just to return to the exhibition briefly, the title, um, beautiful. I think it's a very beautiful title. Not by me. Slight, no, slightly Stolen. opaque um, yes. to some. But, but I think when unpacked, really illuminates the show in an unusual way. I think often exhibition titles are simply window dressing. In this case, if you take those two words apart and apply them to the show, you begin to understand its structure. Mm -hmm. So um, just in advance of everybody going upstairs and enjoying, maybe you mm -hmm. could say a little bit about those two words. So I just say artists hate group shows often for a reason, because they feel like they're being recruited into something that they didn't sign, volunteer for, you know, which is the bright idea of some curator. All your work is about lawnmowers, or all this work is about red beans and rice when they come to New Orleans, or whatever it is. And so it's worse in the case of people who have some, some kind of social identity that seems different, like women, Latin American artists, black artists, which the, the group shows are very, this is what black artists do. You know, not all 14 channels, like Mark Bradford likes to say of blackness, but here's some generalization. So I wanted to talk about that pull that artists have, that African-American artists have between historically, starting maybe with Norman Lewis, and that's part of the reason he's a touchstone, between wanting to be totally free, autonomous, have his own style, be as free as Jackson Pollock, um, on the one hand, and the other hand, feeling a pressure to represent his racial identity, both from the mainstream um, and from within the black community to somehow represent that in a representational, legible way. And so that theme continues on throughout generations of artists, um, for people like Glenn Ligon to say, what, what is the message? You know, I have to have a message. Um, it's a special on these artists who seem um, other to the mainstream. So the title is stolen from Edouard Glissant, who's a beautiful writer and a theorist, theorist um, and he has this phrase, solidary and solitary, not, have to, not to have to choose between a group identity, freely chosen, perhaps, you know, chosen affinities, connections that the artists make, and those are the duets upstairs, and the solitary, the ability to be totally one's, uh, oneself, to make one's own mistakes, as Norman Lewis said it. And then, um, when we were about to go to press, poor Miko, I found out Elizabeth Catlett had already come across this, you know, had used this formulation herself in 1985, and so we squeezed it into the, the footnotes. But they, they said it more beautifully than I could. So. It's wonderful. So I think that's a really lovely note to end on, especially as we're going to progress upstairs and see the show.